Imagine you're building an ASP.NET Core web app and you want to implement live dashboards, real-time chat, live polling, bidding, notifications, or even that dopamine-inducing green check mark when a background task finishes. All of that is possible with SignalR. Whenever you want to update the UI instantly, without the user having to refresh the page, SignalR has your back. In the next few minutes, let's explore what SignalR is, how to implement it, how it works behind the scenes, and some performance tips. First, what is SignalR? SignalR is an open source library that makes it super easy to add real-time web functionality to your apps. Without SignalR, implementing real-time features manually can be a pain. You'd have to handle all the connections, transports, fallbacks, and message routing yourself. But with SignalR, it takes care of all of them under the hood. You just write a few lines and the server can instantly push updates to all connected clients. So how do we implement it? Before we code, let's understand what real time means in this context. Imagine this, user one, user two, user three, and user four are all on your website at the same time. When user one sends a message, it should instantly appear for user two, user three, and user four. No page refresh needed. Cool, let's build it. First, create an ASP.NET Core MVC web app. We'll need this NuGet package. Remember to select the version that matches your project's .NET version. Then, register SignalR in program.cs. Create the chat hub. Map the server-side chat hub class to the slash chat hub endpoint. Add the SignalR JavaScript library in the layout. Then, in JavaScript, declare the SignalR connection object by setting the endpoint to match the server-side hub. We can then use this object to start the connection and communicate with the hub. OK, now the system can start the real-time communication between the server and clients. We have a name input, message input, and also a send button. Below this, we have a message list to display the messages. When a user clicks the send message button, pass the user and message data to the send message method. In the chat hub, create the send message method. This method will handle all the incoming messages from the clients. We can add more code on the server side here. For example, save message to the database or log any information. Then, it broadcasts the message to all the connected clients. This line will trigger the receive message method on every client. On the client side, when a client receives a message, append the message to the message list. Clients.all will broadcast the message to all the clients. We can use clients.client like this to send to a specific user, or clients.group to send to a specific group of users. I've created the full source code for these three cases. Feel free to download it from the link in the description below. So, this is the basic implementation of SignalR. Map and connect the client with the server hub, call the server hub method when the client does something, and broadcasting the message to all the online clients, a specific client or a group of clients, without their need to refresh. So far, things look simple, right? But under the hood, SignalR handles a lot of complex stuff. Let's explore the behind the scenes for SignalR. First, transport protocol selection. When a client connects, SignalR checks what transport methods the client supports, WebSockets, server send events, or long polling. Then, it will select the most efficient protocol supported by both the server and client. In modern browsers, it usually picks WebSockets. If that's not supported, it gracefully falls back to SSE or long polling. Second, connection and group management. SignalR will handle which connection belongs to which user and which groups a connection is in. It automatically maps and manages these for us so we don't have to manually handle these things. But we can also override them if we want to change how we handle a connection. Third, reconnection and failover. If the network disconnects, like switching Wi-Fi or going offline, SignalR can automatically try to reconnect. Just add that with automatic reconnect in your JavaScript like this. Once the network is back, 
the client will reconnect to SignalR Hub without the need to refresh the page. We can also control reconnection timing like this. This will try to reconnect after 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and 30 seconds. Before we wrap up, here are some quick performance tips to keep your SignalR app smooth. Avoid clients.all when not necessary. Broadcasting to all clients can be expensive, especially if you have many users. Use clients.group, clients.user, or clients.client to target only the relevant users. Besides, pay attention to the data size. Compress the messages if needed. Instead of sending full datasets or logs, send only what's needed. It's a wrap. You now know how to use SignalR and build real-time features in your ASP.NET Core app. Whether it's a chat app, live dashboard, polling system, or push notification, SignalR is your secret weapon to make your app feel alive. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe for more .NET content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.